Hey, hey. I missed the last one. Yeah, I hit the button. You ever done that? You hit the button and it just goes ding, ups, sent, shucks. I did that. Anyway, I want you to be approved for a PPP loan that you can pay back from the government so that we can all be in debt together. Now, I just saw that on the screen, so it just hit me. You know, when you see things on the screen, how you just want to go, and they got a Uncle Sam saying it too. I want you to apply for a PPP to help America rebuild. The only thing is you got to have all sorts of stuff to show that you have employees and that you're going to go ahead and borrow this money and pay it back. And if you don't, they own your business. That's a nasty thing. Yeah. Oh, um, so, anyway. On to cheerier subjects. Of course, we don't talk about reality here. It turns out some more of my, um, well, not my heroes, but superheroes from the TV and movies. Yeah, with the swords and all the skin and the muscles and you know, 2.1 million followers on YouTube got kicked off. Hey, Shauna, I hope your family's considering trying to put together a package, get some materials to do a family compound. You know, I'd love to see y'all do that. Yeah. Um, anyway, the uh, the theme tonight, the theme. Did anybody look at their homework? Homework. Whoever comes on a YouTube video expecting somebody to say, where's your homework? Well, you should. Nikki, hi. Okay, Tina, hola, hola. Denise, hey man, there's a whole bunch of people home. It's Friday night, it's date night, yay. Oh, Trinity's already in bed. She was out ice, body ice sliding today, in case you didn't see it, in Salvage, Texas. We had such thick ice that you could body slide across it. Yeah. Good morning from Ireland. Ireland, you guys are going to get some seriously cold too. 5 a.m. Planes, oh man. You know, Ireland's a really tough place to be because there's a whole lot of things out there to make sure that nothing but tax it, like big old radar dishes and all that kind of garbage. And you don't want to be near those things. They give off a lot of bad radiation and stuff. Yeah, but hey, hi, hi to Ireland, man, 5 a.m. I wake up at 5 a.m., I really do, and I have a, a canopy bed. It floats on ropes from the ceiling, and the reason it's a canopy bed is because I have a can next to the bed that I usually just put underneath the covers and pee in. That makes it a canopy bed, and I put it back on the shelf until I need it again. Canopy bed, that's an American canopy bed, not an Irish canopy bed. Anyway, Chopper Dave, howdy. Nikki, um, hopefully your dog's doing good. <laughs> um, the uh, idea of the, what I'm trying to get out there nowadays, I'm trying to give this understood. Some people think it's like the old essay contest where it was 350 words essay and they won a house. That was nice, wasn't it? Not for me. But it was really nice for the girl that won it. $50 entry fee. <sighs> but there's lots of problems with that. Lots of problems. You see, I can't just give stuff away to anybody I want. If I have a contest like that, no entry fee, because that way if there's no entry fee, anybody in the world can enter into a contest that is effectively not really a contest because it's in a fantasy book that's actually not really a fantasy book. It's called a quantum story. But if it looks like a fantasy book and it smells like a fantasy book to censors and Fibon and youtube -alitis. if they all think that it is that, then they will be that to them. Now, to you, all of you out there, I think you've been around and understood now. If I give you a bunch of trash, it's not taxable. So $50,000 in trash, if you were to have to go out and buy trash, and you go out and buy trash, don't you? Go to antique stores all the time and buy trash. Howdy, Tina. Well, guess what? Uh, yeah, I'm asleep at 5 a.m. No, I wake up at 5 a.m. to pee. Then I go back to sleep. I have no trouble going back to sleep. I have a beautiful bed. It's easy to go back to sleep. And I didn't used to pee so much, but you know what? A few decades changes your world. So, along that line, I'll drink some more coffee, and guess why I pee a lot? I don't know. I have no clue. Okay. Back to the notes. 
what are we trying to do? We're trying to go ahead and set up pure salvage outposts. This would be, say for example, a pole barn, a metal building. I just happen to have 87,000, 100,000 square feet of metal corrugated tin that you can put a lot of those little metal buildings together. And that would be an area where you store your materials, your windows, your doors, flooring, and the materials you're going to use to build a house. Let's assume this is a, a pure salvage outpost situated to build one house at a time inside until it's dry. And then you have skates like I've done and you've seen in all my videos. Brad's videos, excuse me. I was involved. I have designed everything. So I say, hey, my, sometimes I'm referring to what Brad did, but you know, you guys know better. I, I was, I'm going to try to take credit from Brad. He's a great guy. He's given all this shit for me to give away. Excuse me, all this materials for me to give away. And so I want to always make sure you understand he's doing this for y'all. He wants you to do this. So thank you, Sean. I love reading. Writing, not so much. Well, I love reading and I love writing, but I don't have time to read as much as I used to. So I appreciate when you guys don't have a chance to read my 3,000 word essays and stuff that I write. <sighs> anyway, um, back to what are you going to do? You're going to do, okay, here's the idea. If you build an outpost, that means we have all the tools in one space. And we can frame out the house, which is the hardest part for most people, especially women who have not climbed up on top of um, two by four walls and carried two by fours that are 12 foot long like this balancing and wander out there and place it really nice and neat and shoot it in with a nail gun. You know, because some people might think about falling. And if you think about falling, chances are, guess what? You're going to fall. Now, I prefer if you think about falling, think about falling and landing on your feet gracefully. You know, like, whoa, wasn't that cute? Do that. Now, I have had one gentleman who went ahead and fell and broke his arm. And he fortunately, he fessed up that he just got done smoking a joint. And didn't screw that board quite into the wall enough and went walking on it and the wall and the board fell and he fell and broke his arm. He fortunately he didn't charge me for that. It was one of the only times in all the time. And he did threaten to hit me with a two by four when I fired it one time. Um, came at me with, with fist flying. See, that was the third time I fired him. But he was a good guy. Good guy otherwise. Just that temper thing. Anyway, why don't I have more employees? I don't know. I don't know. You're kind of happy you stayed up north right about now? Holy cow. No, man. I got melting snow. I'm, I'm going to be in the 60s this week, man. Hoo-wee. 70 next week. 73. I'll take that any day over bro. My bro is going to be... Oh, they'll see the road in Michigan. Maybe. Oh, wait. No, no. There's two more storms. I'm going to miss those other storms. I'm skipping those. See... I've been really praying that that was just the finest example of snow and ice I'm ever going to see this year. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I feel akin to all you people up north now. Yeah, I've had the snow, and it was actually quite nice. And uh, it was kind of chilly. That 12 degrees at bedtime is, is you know, 20, 15 degrees waking up. It's a little chilly, but I'm cool. No complaints. God wants me to experience it. I'm adapting. I'm an adaptive guy. So, besides, I'm not real. I'm fictional, you know, digital. We have an amazing resistance to heat and cold being digital, by the way. Anyway, all right. Rolling joints. Yes, rolling joists. Of course, that's what I said, Chopper Dave. You kind of know what I'm talking about. You've been around the people who be censoring that kind of stuff. And yes, joists, absolutely. They're a rather rounded edge joists, much, much less sharp as the other ones. Anyway. So, the point being along the line here is that I'm going to have several things going on. One of them is I don't really want to give one house to a group of people. So, you got to have a group of people to get a group of houses. Up to five houses per group. What does that mean? Okay, let's see. Anybody go to the site? and sh uh, Of course. And do your homework because I put some notes up there. If you go to the Facebook site, the last post I made, if Facebook fib on, lets you see that. It is the one that has little pictures of the houses. You can even see this backwards in code. Look at that. That would be an example of, count them. Well, actually not the Quonset hut. Okay. The idea is you want to put three, four, five houses together. You can actually fit 10, 10 tiny houses on an acre of land facing away from each other. So they don't even know each other's there when you're sitting on the porch. My small houses, uh, the kid is 67 square feet. Absolutely the most favorite state in houses of the kid and the ginger swan. Ginger swan is uh, 80 square feet, by the way. Incidentally, 
Do you notice I use my Michigan or nasal nose voice all the time? I go really fast? Okay. Just see. The body's, yeah. I can't talk fast without that. So I talk slow and I talk low. But when I get to going fast, I go up into the nose. Anyway, too bad. What I'm trying to do here is explain, though, that if you were to, say, get it, uh, one, two, three houses, that's enough for a little house, 12 by 20, which is going to be a kitchen. Uh, it'll have a dining area in it that way, a place to sit, like a living area, and talk with everybody while you're cooking. Um, ideally, that has a nice loft. Not taxable as living space. It's a storage space. Where you can store two little bedrooms upstairs for your guests. Or for the person, maybe one of the people lives there. Um, these are designed around the idea of not having to pay any taxes on outbuildings that are sitting on people's property who happen to be setting up a trust rather than selling property to people whom they want to go ahead and allow to live there. Help take care of the land, farm it, take care of the animals. Um, and have the right to kind of stay there, like a life estate. As long as you don't screw up, you can stay there for your life with your house. If something should ever happen, these houses are built to be portable buildings. That's because it's a loopholeology principle. Loopholeology, for those of you who do not know, is how do you use loopholes, the study of loopholes, to go ahead and dodge paying taxes, to get around the rules by using the rules, the loopholes, because I'm almost, almost always, somehow, through some mystery of... Legally, there's almost always a loophole in every law. If they do not define specifically what a house is, then it is not anything but what they define it to be. So if they say a house is 700 square feet, well, by golly, you better be 700 or 750. But Texas, all of a sudden, people start building smaller houses. So guess what? It's now 400 square feet for a house. So if you're 375 square feet, you're not a house. And if you're portable, which means I can jack it up and put it on a trailer, which is a sensible thing to do, not build it on a trailer and leave my $10,000 trailer to rot with tires for ages and ages. And look at my, and say, wow, look at that $10,000 going to crap. Look at that $10,000. Isn't that nice? Or you could take your house off of it, jack it up, set it on some posts, stilts, or otherwise. So it's portable. Depreciate it in 10 years like a portable building. You might hand it off to your kids as a depreciated portable building piece of trash with no tax ramifications and not being taxed as a house because it's a portable building. And if you happen to rent it out for a BNB, &B, it's not a house. It is a portable building, so it's not a 15% BNB tax. Wow. Because it's a portable building. And you can have it for sale, for example. It might be a quarter million dollars for that quarter building. So it's for sale, and you want to sell it, and they got to test drive it, and they just pay you for a survey or b and or whatever, but it's not taxable. Regardless, one way or another, we have a loophole that it works. Now, maybe they do want to pay you a quarter million dollars for it, in which case you sell it. It's portable. And you build another one for 50000 and make 200000 profit. Actually, it doesn't cost that much. If you do it yourself, this is the game. Now, some of you want to just build one house for just one person. My suggestion, for example, is if you got five acres or ten acres, and you go out there and put you that one house in the middle of your one garden and all your chickens and all your little things you're going to have growing, and you want to leave, and it's just you and hubby. Now, around you, there's a lot of hungry people, and there's animals like us. We got, we got some cat going through our property, footprints that big. For example, hunting. We, all the snow taught us some things. Like there's some big creatures passing across our property. Taking coyotes and stuff. Foxes. And they're taking our chickens. And so we know how now because they left us prints. But if you're out there in the middle of nowhere and you don't have a fence up. And you don't have uh, a wall up. And you don't have a way to protect yourself. Then predators. And the worst, worst, worst predators in the world. Yeah. You got it. Oh, I love Micro, by the way. He came here and interviewed him. We had a great, great session. Uh, somebody's got to do it. Took him down in the mud cave. Yeah. Oh, well, that's another story. But I, lo I love Mike Rowe as a good comedian and a good interviewer and a very good logical guy. I loved, I loved meeting with him. Anyway. Oh, see, I lost my track. Okay. Um, here's the point. If you guys can go ahead and take advantage of these loopholes and create a business, a tiny business, 
It's so tiny that you don't have any employees. You just have a place where business happens. It's a co-op. There's a lot of tools there. There's uh, materials there. There's intelligence and wisdom and skills there. And there's ways to learn things. There's videos, which I've made hundreds of them by now. And we'll make more depending on what you need. Because see, nowadays I can make a magical miracle video. Mi <laughs> yeah, a magical miracle video on your house that you're going to build when I give you this package. We design it here. I do a space magic design. And you go back and you build it. And you can, your team comes in. We might build one while you're here in a week's time. Stay in the house during the week. We build a house. You all know how to do it. The basics. You might have some carpenters. So we don't have to teach you as much. If there's a carpenter, a good carpenter on the team, not one of the guys that just builds a Home Depot package piece of crap with shit rock house that's in vinyl windows and has no idea what toxins are and thinks fiberglass is a great insulation. That is not what I call a carpenter, by the way. Joseph, Father Jesus, that was a carpenter. All hand tools. Raised a boy that way. Well, part of the way. Carpentry is a good business. Respectable business. You build houses for people. You build tiny houses for people. You don't need to build giant mansions for rich people. You can build tiny houses. In Texas, you can design up to 1,000 square foot houses with no architect degree and no license required. 1,000 square feet. You will never design, if you're smart, you'll never design a 1,000 square foot house. You'll design four 250 square foot houses or one 350 square foot house and four 150 square foot houses, and that way you will have a thousand square feet in five houses that are not taxable as a single house, which depreciates over 29 years. You get to depreciate it or have the government pay for it, in other words, because you don't pay taxes because you write depreciation against your income. And so let's say you buy it for a business so you can depreciate extra good, and it's a and b and you don't live in all the time. You have five of them. You live in one. The other four, what do you do? You rent them out. And you make income. It's the same as having five rent houses, except they're not houses. They're not taxed like houses. And when you leave them to your grandkids and your children, they're just untaxed, no tax ramifications, no implications. Same as if you win a prize for 50,000 materials that's actually just trash, not materials. It's just, we just deem it might be worth that. You actually will never have a piece of paper saying that you got $50,000 in materials. So you have to pay the government. $15,000 for the privilege of accepting it, a gift from somebody. But if the gift is trash, what a loophole. And if you build a house out of the trash, IRS will not allow you to add the value of your time to the material value, which is trash, to come up with the value of a house for taxation purposes. Unless there's another one nearby they can compare it to and appraise it and say, hey, that's a house built out of trash. That's worth $50,000 because there's one right down the street in the same neighborhood. Not an expensive neighborhood. No, in the same... Oh, wait a second. These are portable buildings. Those laws don't apply. Yeah, that's right. Oh. I actually had the tax man come out and he thought, oh, you got a and b I heard about it. I said, yeah, they're portable buildings. He said, really? I said, yeah, let me show you. And we went out there and looked at him and kept going, oh, yeah, it is, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Hmm. Can't tax that. You're right. No, can't tax that. Not like a house. And so you, what you do is, well, what it costs you? You know, when you got those senior moments and you're thinking about it, well, think, well, I see a bunch of trash and human energy. And if I sold the house tomorrow for 50000 and I got 15000 in materials, I sold it for $50,000. I told IRS, look it, I got 40, 400 hours in that house, man. So I got the equivalent of that's $30,000 in labor. So I, my, my income on my labor is 15%. No, they go, oh, no, 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 that's profit. Your labor's worth nothing. Nothing. Doesn't count for diddly squat. It's profit. Your material cost, which is nothing. Oh, darn. Don't sell it. And, oh, your labor, which is nothing. So if you sell it, whatever you sell it for is pure profit. Which means if you sell that, which is a likely possibility for $40,000, $50,000, on ten or $15,000 material package, which might, you have to add the two by fours, the two by sixes, I keep saying this, this the shiplap, I mean, excuse me, the insulation, the screws, the nails, the wrapper. I like Tyvek, um, I like it with the um, solar barrier for down south. You may not want that for up north, but down here we don't need to, you know, don't need a lot of heat inside the house, yeah, we got enough. But anyway, 
I can show you how to weatherize the windows and all those things to do. So you can use old-fashioned windows. And up north, you just put a storm window on in the wintertime. And four inches of air gap is the same as a high-efficiency window that fogs up every 10 years and has to be replaced. So instead of replacing it, you can wash it and put it back on. Or put your screens on and then wash it before you put it back on anyway. So, um, you know, I don't know. That's, I got some of those in stock, too. All over from the north, I got them. They are from Ohio and Illinois. And you guys up north, this is a no-brainer. Down in Texas... They spend a lot of money to go buy double pane insulated glass windows that we can replace every 12 years because they fog up in the heat down here. Or maybe they do up there too. Maybe you guys just like replacing windows. Pick a different color of clear every time, right? Keep in fashion. I got clear windows. Hey, me too. So we use things like the $43 an ounce organic linseed oil. I mean, excuse me, a, a pint. $43 a pint. Not a quart. Not a gallon, $43 a pint. Do, 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 do. It's about 160 a gallon at that level. Um, and, and you use that, actually more, um, and it it's, uh, goes a long ways because you spread it very thin. You don't waste it. You don't spill it. Dang sure don't spill it. Oh, man, I got a little upset once or twice because somebody spilled a little can of that. Um, but it's all pigment and it's all linseed oil with no volatiles, no... Um, dangerous chemicals for the environment. So you're still getting oil-based paint, but not all the VOCs. And you can only import it from Sweden because it seems nobody in the United States can figure out how to mix linseed oil and pigment and not add all the other chemicals that allows it to peel every seven years so you're guaranteed you'll come back and buy more because you're never going to like that color for a whole lifetime. That's what they tell me at the store. So why would you want to have it last for more than seven years? I'm old fashioned. I like to paint something once and have it last the rest of my lifetime. Darn. Can't get over those things. But anyway, mortise and tendon dowel. Oh, yes. I've got a lot of wood that's mortise and tendon already. And I got it actually packaged. So you got original house, all the bottom plates and top plates, mortise and tendon with the vertical pieces ready to go. We can fill in the gaps, put windows in and stuff, and actually recreate a couple of those houses. I have, uh, this is what I'm giving away is these things to go ahead and see them put together by people that could do it in communities like I drew a picture of out in woods and out everywhere away from the cities where you can have homeschooling and you can teach children different ways of doing things like braiding. Look at this. Trendy braided my hair a different way so I could go with this striped shirt. My wardrobe department. They're so good. Right next to my lighting department, which is pretty good sometimes. Anyway. Texas Hill Country is out of my, no, 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 no. I'm this side of the Hill Country where we have soil and massive amounts of water. Chopper Dave, you looked at my sign. My, Salvage Texas is not regular Texas. It's fantasy land. Really fantasy land. In fact, we want to have some uh, some bike rallies out here. We're right in the middle of the Hill Country, um, 45 minutes south of Austin, 45 minutes east of San Antonio. And thank God, an hour and a half west of Houston. Because 30 miles east of us is Flatonia. That means it gets flat there. That's the marker. It's 100 foot above sea level. And you never go above 100 foot above sea level all the way to Houston. That's 140 miles from here. So you go down that hole. And if there's a big wave that comes over and it's 100 foot high, it can come in as a tsunami kind of wave. You know, not the little flap on your shore thing. The tsunami. Mm-hmm. It could come 100 miles and not go over 100 foot high. Whew. Luckily, I'm about 450 here, so it's got to be a bigger wave. Um, I've got log homes, actually, we took down sitting here. One's waiting to go up. If you come down here, help put it up. It's a D-log. We screw it together with logs, cheat, and put it together. Then you can stay here whenever you come down. I got one sitting out there ready to go up. I put all the pieces out there. It's going to be a hexagon, a six-sided Log cabin with a porch on two sides with a loft on the top. I need somebody to put it together. I stacked it all up, and the kids that came here, their, their attention span ran out almost within a week and a half of stacking all the stuff up for them to build a house. Too much work. You know, kids in their 20s, have you noticed there's an attention span issue? Mine was pretty short, too. But I mean, like, you know, Put them in a paper bag, fold it over, put a paper clip on it, and they're stuck. That, that takes them out. We're done. Over. Game done. 
unless there's a vacation or something or a possible party in that case they just cut a hole inside the bag and get the hell out of there but if it's work they're not gonna get out of the top of that bag for nothing how'd that happen i'm joking guys all you especially young kids sherry there you are girl now yes you should remember i still got those pieces i need to put that back together again sherry joy glad to see you back you're the one supposed to be carrying all this stuff around all these people are supposed to be getting it and hopefully you'll find a place Somewhere, Joy, to put a little group together yourself. So you, when you truckers decide you ain't going to truck no more, you got a place to park together and uh, get hemorrhoid surgery. That's also one of the problems of the truck. For those big old guys, the big old bellies that don't walk around much, you might just want to go ahead and investigate the probability that you're going to have a hemorrhoidectomy in your future. Hmm. And I speak from experience, it's not that bad after about 30 years of waiting for one. You know, somewhere where you stopped saying he had to put his fist in there with a the scalpel in it that kept bothering me. I don't know why, but darn. Anyway, jokes aside, ah, I need somebody to go ahead. And what they're doing is putting together a package. Now, on my notes today, for those of you who did study and those of you who didn't study, I'm going to go ahead and flash. Did I ever read that one, by the way? Mm. Oh, yeah, by the way, why did these look like I'm doing kid stories? Kid stories. A few tiny houses can be a dream come true. These are word bites. Why do I use word bites? Because somehow or another, I got to get everybody's attention, stick a little hook in their brain called a seed that suggests to them that, yes, you could be the ones putting together your little retreat that you never imagined was possible because some old guy is going to possibly give you nearly, not all, you got some skin in the game, nearly all the materials you need. And here's the saddest part about this. You know what that is? Most of the people who are actually going to be interested in this are going to be women. Typically 35 to 55, 60 years old because probably don't have a whole lot of savings in the bank. Uh, I spend a little bit of money on the kids, taking care of stuff, you know, living and uh, retirement. So good in all the jobs you typically get as a woman in life or like me. I think my big year at 29 years old was $6,900. Yeah, my social security. That's why I'm getting that whopping $1,200. Yeah. Living good, watching those people on unemployment get eight sixty a month. I just read about a week, excuse me, a week. Yeah, we get it a month, they get it a week. Yeah, that's right. The thing when you get old, you don't notice those things, do you? That they're getting three and a half, four grand to our thousand. Yeah. Sure is fun getting old and living off your retirement big, isn't it? Yeah. Luckily, I don't have to, but I don't have much need. Anyway. <sighs> Tiny, oh yeah, if I can, here's, here's an idea, guys. One of the things I have in line for kids, you take refrigerator boxes, refrigerator box, the big ones, okay, and you bring it home, and you stick it on the floor. Ideally, you put it on the wall, and we project an image I have that's a plan. And you take your marker, and you draw it, and then you take a razor with cut back, and the parent, parent helping the kid, and you cut one side of the box. So then it all folds up, into like origami, except it's a little tiny house for the kids to have a, a party of building your tiny houses out of refrigerator boxes. So you can get these refrigerator boxes over at Home Depot or anyplace else, and you bring it home, and you use the marker, and you draw the pattern, use the folds, and you make your roof. I mean, a lot of us did this as kids, but now what you want to do is you want to teach kids that if you draw it on there right, you make a template out of a refrigerator box, for a play toy house. And I will supply the lumber. Yes. As one of the contests you want to do while we're giving stuff away is contests amongst them is to give you the wood to build toy houses, like dog houses, cat houses, kids play houses out of all the materials I got lying around that are, you know, a lot of them you can go through the piles and some of us, you know, old wood is not necessarily good wood, but some of it's really good wood. It's all stacked up and some of it got rotten, some of it didn't. We're going to go through all that and what's good, we're going through it. We get to take it and then use it for packages to build all these things with you parents building with your kids. That's the ideal. To teach them how to do it and possibly to learn how to do it. 
Now, the idea behind having Pure Salvage Outposts is these become community centers where we go down and do this together at the community centers. And if I get, oh, 300 community centers out there, then each week we can all be building projects and stuff together. You have the elders teach something really cool. And we have now places where we can make them at. As a tiny community out in the boondocks, not up in the city. And so that way we can teach life skills and how to make... Um, Oh, you know, permaculture function by having pots and plants and greenhouses and chicken coops and recycling the fertilizer from one to make food for the other and all those kind of things. You know, old fashioned stuff that I hopefully will be able to find some of the 80 year olds and the 90 year olds that know how to do it the old fashioned way and use that instead of chemicals, the new fashioned Monsanto way, which I highly disapprove of. And if we can go ahead and do it the old-fashioned way and teach it in these little communities called Pure Salvage Outposts, which you can call them anything else you want, but they're outposts. And it doesn't matter. You might want to have it be um, a Boy Scout retreat. It might be um, a church retreat. It might be, um, in one case, a bird sanctuary, which is actually right now got a really good chance of getting five houses and possibly more because the first round is a million dollars in materials. That's six months. I got to get rid of that. If you don't tell everybody and I can't find enough good people to get rid of it in six months, I'm not giving the next million away. Because Brad said, give it away to people that want it and are willing and deserving of it. And we'll do something like build pure salvage outposts, which then can self-perpetuate. They become the support mechanism, the financial mechanism, the means through which those with human energy can mix that with the machinery and the salvage to create synergy. That means all that working together to a positive end, creating housing for the elderly and taking down the big old houses. And just like, you know, Sherry Davis was one of those that got to go out there and she got some incredible, oh, actually very nice kitchen cabinets, all made out of real wood, not plywood. It was made out of one by twelves and actually quite a tragic story. Sanctuary, um, it was a bird sanctuary, actually, Sherry, that some people out there have actually made quite a bit of progress on in the animal sanctuary but particularly birds and their kids. And they've done a really good job already building with salvage and stuff. And as far as I'm concerned, they've won my heart, but they still have to go through the, the, the motions of explaining to me and showing me the logistics, how you're going to come out and do it. Make sure you come out here and learn the basics. And then you get the elders, the ones in the middle, which Sherry, you're supposed to be one of those in the middle. that can go out there and teach people how to take things down and turn trash into treasure. But also if you have like a village where you're building them, every time you build one out on your acreage, then you got a house left over and the boys can go out there and teach others how to build and do seminars and start outposts. And by saying start outposts is help them build their first houses or hey, if they get a project to tear down and your boys got experience tearing down, they're consultants. Now they can go out there with their iPhone and do it or they could go out there and actually help establish what I hope to be is 300, 500. We could be doing actually 500 outposts. Um, and I can supply a substantial number of houses, almost 500 houses out of inventory, probably more, depending on how we construct them. But what happens is, and Sherry will attest to this, is if you go start tearing down a house in a small town somebody gave you, or a barn, and they do, they just give them to you. Now what I can do? <laughs> I got to tear it down. Where am I going to put it? I got to stack it someplace. So also, Sherry, for example, if you were to establish one of those outposts, I would supply the racking system out of uh, um, some of the Home Depot stuff, because I have uh, at least... 16, 17 sets of racks, the big tall racks that are three, four layers high. They're in Home Depot for all the building equipment, uh, building you know, lumber and stuff. Um, so these are some things I want to go ahead and distribute out around the country to have some larger centers. Every 75 miles or so, you could have an outpost. And the idea is if you're tearing stuff down, you go and drop it off and somebody may buy some of it from you. They may want to go ahead and build with it. They may bring a team out and build a house right near where you're tearing down at. This has got to happen locally. And not UN, United Nations, coming in and saying, hey, you're all going to live in 300 square foot houses and this is what they're going to look like. See that box over there? I know it smells a little bit chemically, but hey, that's your space. Now, we got a better way. Old fashioned, human ingenuity, American creative art houses you can live in and blow code out your butt, as far as I'm concerned. When it comes down to national code and international code being written by global corporations that are forcing you to do nothing but buy their crap. No. Wrong logic. You don't use that kind of logic. I don't need AC wiring in my house to have a place to sleep. I can use DC wiring and blow off having to have AC to pass code all through my house and have an electrician put it in to boot. 
You don't need an electrician to do these kind of houses because they're not houses. They're portable buildings. You can design them without an architect degree because they're portable buildings. You can do anything you want. You can sell them without a license for our real estate because they're portable buildings. They're not even mobile homes, which requires a license. They're not... Um, what they call them, modular buildings, because that requires a license to sell them, to transport them, to set them up, to make them. Same as mod, you know, trailers. And you know what? Not quite yet. Tiny houses on wheels, but that's because they allow under 350 square feet for them to be toxic boxes. They're called garden homes. And they're allowed to be toxic because you're not supposed to live in them for more than 48 hours straight. Now, yeah, the TV show Walking Dead. Yeah, the outposts are actually in this sense that they're... Um, you know, I don't even watch TV, so I guess they got a lot of connotations built into those things nowadays. So you say a word, and it has a whole different meaning. But if you thought about it in the Walking Dead concept, you know what? The zombies out there, if they came in and said, hey, you know what? We want to be part of your community. And you go, yeah, but you're kind of like on a meth head kind of trip, aren't you? Yeah, but we can do a lot of work while we're mething out. <laughs> and you go, no, you know, I, I don't think you're going to fit. But we want to come anyway. Nah, you're not going to fit. Why do I call them outposts? Well, you just might want to have a gate. Uh, you might want to have a fence. Hey, if you find some rocks, wouldn't hurt to put some rocks along the gate so the cars couldn't drive through your gate. Why? Well, what is a zombie? Let me see. Somebody who's on antidepressants and drugs or drinking and salts. I think someone salts. Goodness, what are those things? Meth they have, ice they have, they call names now that we didn't even have when I was a kid. And when I was a kid, we had drugs around, but we didn't have, it's like going to, you could have any sort of illness and end up with Parkinson's because you did something one time. And the stuff I've seen over in England, I mean, they end up being really, truly zombies. I mean, standing out on the road, literally just, I'm sorry, kids. It's a dangerous world. Don't stick stuff in your body made by some idiot who wants you to go Dumb dead. His name may be Soros. Why do you want everything legal? So he can go ahead and spike it all. Excuse me. Did I get distracted again? So, don't use outpost. Use, again, colony. Use sanctuary. Use retreat. Use fort. I like fort. Okay. Artist Fortress. That's one of the names. Artistfortress.com. Yep, there's lots of, I use that a couple times. Fort Salvage, got that too. Fort Salvage, because I happen to have some pretty nice perimeter walls and moats and things like that in my artistic creation in my fantasy world that doesn't exist called Salvage Texas. Remember all that part? It doesn't exist. It's all fantasy. It's all part of a book. It's part of Wibbly and Wub. And those of you who come here and see it all, you're just having a, um, what do they call that? Uh, common hallucination. Yes, that's it. You're entering in my CGI um, holographic world when you come through my gate. And everything you see once you're here is not real. So if you go off and tell people stuff, they won't go believe it. No, it's not possible. He didn't do that. That couldn't happen. Darby didn't. Yeah, right. Darby. Darby. Just tell him Darby did it. Anyway, back to the other issues. If you want it. And I'm telling you, some of these people I know, why not? Why not take a gift? Given to good, honest people that believe in God, the patriots, country. That's what I'm after. Not Antifa, thank you very much. I'm sorry. Not BLM. Guys, don't even apply. Don't lie, cheat, steal. Come here and say, give me some materials or else I'll have an ORL sign that says, purple on my fence posts in Texas. Oh, yeah. For you who are not from Texas, if you come up to somebody's ranch... And they got purple painted on top of their fence posts. That means if you cross this line, it's trespassing and you could be shot dead in your tracks. That's Texas. It's different than some of them other states, guys. California, stay out of Texas. And there's somebody down here proposing some sort of anti-gun bills in our state. How'd they get here? They're in the wrong state. We, 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 we're out in the country here, man. If you ain't got the guns to protect yourself and somebody comes around and by the time sheriff gets here from 50 miles away, story's all over. That's why that 12-year-old got that gun out and shot that man dead in that one place to save grandma who'd already been shot. Because guns stop people and 
yelling at them won't if they got a gun. And just out of the clear blue, criminals seem to have guns when you don't. So why not even the odds? Oops. In the fantasy world, not in reality, guys. Because, hey, man, if I was in reality, you know, what the sense would be all over my butt. Talk about Second Amendment rights and stuff. But in the Book of Wibbley, which is a fantasy world, of course, where they don't necessarily agree with by bid on their their president in the fantasy book, you know, because they want to take away their ability to protect themselves as a country, you know, and that's kind of crazy. Who'd want to do that? So it's just a fantasy book. They'd never do that in the real world. But if you're going to have your little colony, colony, how's that better? Colony, Shoshana? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it. Don't California my Texas. You got it. So we're going to have a colony, a retreat, a fortress, a um, sanctuary. I like sanctuary. See, sanctuary is very nice. Except they might think it's religious. And, you know, some stories somewhere are heard. Maybe they might actually attack Christians or something, too. So sanctuary for birds, a bird sanctuary. You know, doves. Yeah. So along the way to the next day, when you wake up and you're making your plan, and I want to have a need for five houses, we're going to start with one or two. You put one or two together, I come on down and get more. You take one and don't put it together and sits there and looks up at the sky and rots. You don't get no more. No. Sorry. But if you do, yes, we do like to play cowboys, Sherry. I agree. And target practice in advance. Preparation is a key to success. Don't we agree? And, oh, yeah. What is an assault weapon? Is that simply because somebody's assaulting you and you shoot at them? Does that make an assault weapon? then that case every gun out there is an assault weapon because somebody's going to use it to assault somebody or defend themselves from assault. So is any weapon not an assault weapon? And if you define taking all assault weapons, does that not, in effect, preclude any weapon that could be used for assault from being kept by the public? That sounds like a pretty stupid description. But, hey, you know, what do I know? I'm not making the laws. I'm just hoping we're out of it seceded from the union and it's not my problem when they decide that kind of stupid crap someplace else in the world other than Texas, right? Whew. Okay, Clint coming out treehouse. Oh, hey, I'm the treehouse guy. Yes. Cool. Please do come out. I'd love to see you do some good projects, man. I mean, yeah, some, 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 uh, let's get some stuff going sometimes. I need people to get out there and promote using all American parts. No Chinese parts. No toxic new materials. And that's what this is about. So if somebody's going to try to impress me in the process of writing me an essay and showing me that I've got this elder and I've got these craftspersons and I've got these tools going to be available and we've got this land and we'll be able to put these houses together in this space and uh, then we're going to have a way to hook them up with some sort of ingenuity. It doesn't have to be AC electricity. I don't have it in my house. Somewhere in the property it's good to have some AC, but hey, the idea is to morph every outpost into what that group there wants it to be. Not what Darby or what Brad from some faraway place in India, wherever he might be, is going to say, no, I want, no, he's not going to say, I want you to do this or that. He's going to say, give them a chance. Let them show us because the only way we're going to find out what the potential in all environments, weather and otherwise, social environments is going to be is to let creativity come from all these incredible human beings that effectively mean God in as many forms has a chance to manifest from many perspectives solutions through a peace virus. This little thing of wibbly, the language of wub, energy of spirit coming in and allowing you to create things like a body, a wub and body, a wib, or Houses, art houses, energy of soul, well, embodied in something else. You can embody it in a song, which I love songs. Songs of Salvage, I've got a poem. Please, write more versions. It's a great song. It's a long song. It's a challenge. But my son accomplished it. And he was dyslexic and did it by himself. And did a darn good job. I'd love to see more kids out there write songs of salvage and start promoting the idea that we can make careers out of this. We can save trees that have been locked up in houses and are good for another 300 years if we keep and preserve them instead of chopping down new cheesy speed-grown trees. Namaste, Chopper Dave. Come visit. Thank you.
Okay. I'm going to go ahead. Good folks with guns is the best way to stop the evil with guns. I agree. If you don't have guns, it's hard to stop a gun. Really hard. I'm good with the bow. I'm good with a knife. I'm good with an axe, but darn hard to throw those for long distances. So we have a training center on the spot. Oh, yeah. We actually have a place where you could train and do all those things. Of course, who's going to have a village that doesn't have a training area? These are the things I'm looking at. Is this scenario going to give you life skills? And so when you start to submit for these million dollars of materials, it's not one person going to get a million dollars. It's a bunch of people. Anywhere from, I want a minimum of two to three houses. Now, for those that want less than five houses or three houses, but still want to be able to get enough materials to build your own house, I'm going to have some bartering possibilities. So you can come in and help take stuff down, help load stuff, help pack stuff. I've got so much stuff, 70, 80,000 square foot of buildings to take down and strip. And there's going to be stuff out of it for anybody that helps. They get materials and they can build their own, but also help others possibly put their outposts together. Because I assure you, if you go out and help somebody frame up their first couple buildings and show them how, you're going to be a hero. And you ever go back to that community to visit again, you're going to be a hero. Free space to stay, somebody cooking you dinner. Unless, of course, you do something really screwed up while you're there and get drunk and act like an asshole. In which case, they may never want you to come back again, and I wouldn't either. I don't tolerate um, abusive, obnoxious drunks, drugs, and otherwise, and nobody should in any community. The problem with developing a community, I'm going to warn you ahead of time, is you can't just invite everybody in. you got to be a little bit discriminatory and say, yeah, these are the kind of people we want, and no, these are kind of, we don't want those kind of people. And once you do that and establish a community, these are part of the parameters I'm looking for. What's, the, what's going to be your criteria? If you want to build something for homeless, okay, I'm all right with that, but let's get into the reality of it. Not all homeless people want to be social and can control themselves and may have some issues. So you need to be compensating and figuring out how you're going to be able to do this. And I'm all for this. Believe me. I want veterans to be able to build veterans communities. And if they have PTSD, we need to have special communities so they can kind of work their way back into society. Society is pretty harsh. It's pretty hard. And a lot of people don't want to deal with it. So maybe you don't. Maybe you have villages where you only have to go so far. And that's a village where you have people you know. And you can grow stuff and you can do things and create things and build things and not have to go back into the city because frankly you don't have to have ptsd to not be able to tolerate a bunch of people and laws and crazy crap in the city it drives you crazy just because there's so much stuff if you're already stressed out if you're already got i can't handle anymore and you go into the city well that's too much more we were a beanie for the 5g just because my ears get hot my head starts to boil in the city i can't do it and same for Trinity. She's got um, a literally um, an allergic reaction to electromagnetic radiation. And so we have a shirt with silver in it. I even get shorts if I want to protect my nature. Anyway, okay. Yes, teach the kids to hammer, teach the kids to build stuff. You know, right now I can't. I can't legally have a kid hire him at 15 years old and put a power saw in his hand because he's too young to handle a power saw and all these rules and stuff. But now if you have small communities and kids are out there and they have to be helping, he picks up a saw and he builds something, makes something by himself. Hey, man, gee, who's going to enforce that? In the city, the neighbor's going to come over there, point you out and have the child protective services come and take your child away because you broke the law and let him handle a power saw. Crazy. Okay, child. Yeah. So, it has happened to have for Webblers, Webblers, Wubbers, actually. Anybody who believes in Wub, energy of spirit, energy of soul, and a world union of beings, that's a Wubber. Check back on my words, Chopper. And uh, I have a bike, but I don't ride it much. But let's get together, and uh, I'm going to get going again. This is a pretty long one, and uh, I wanted to go ahead and say, it's not going to be that hard for people that never thought they could fulfill their dream, which is the other part of that, of course. Remember, it's not just for you. It's for those you love, too. Because it's the ones you love you want to do this for. So now, what do you do next? Okay, we have a plan. The plan is we want to help you out. We want to give you guidance. We want to mentor you through the process of what do I need? How do I do it? You know, I want you to do it and figure it out as much as you can yourself. And then I fine-tune it. I'm not doing it for you because it's going to be different where you are. You might have an uncle that has an old garage. You might have a local town that has a bunch of buildings sitting empty that you can get one of them to use to make this project start off. And elders that will help you out. These are things I want you to find locally. So Rubble's the little guy at the bottom. That's the little earthworm, the avatar that's bringing earth, this world union of beings, 
from the intercosmic web society where this code of 13 words is dropped into all the worlds when they're ready. So finally, the end of it is we agree, says Rubbles, the avatar of web. He says, we agree we should be freed. Thus I bring you Wibblery to help you find the peace we need. Three million dollars invested into people just to plant the seeds. That could educate, empower, and create the outposts and the villages of people who will thrive and will begin to salvage all of the best of the past that we can. We don't burn the past. We don't destroy the past. We don't erase the past. We learn from the past. Mankind, if technology has their way, mankind will be stored in a great cloud in cyberspace where you can be erased, censored. To spot fake news, they're going to go ahead and see what you do. Big Brothers, I. You know, the one that we're playing with. This is code. You know, they can't read this because they don't know it's backwards. Hmm. Not really. But with that said, guys, have a good night. Love you all. Do your I love yous in the mirror, remember? And if you didn't see this live, don't worry. They're not telling anybody it's happening. See you later.